on that question. Another clear parallel between Lester Pearson's foreign policy and Stephen Harper's foreign policy is on the question of Zionism, Palestine, Israel. And Pearson was a strong supporter of Zionism uh, before the creation of the State of Israel. He played an important role uh, on two different UN committees that dealt with the British mandate of Palestine in 1947, when the British handed the mandate to the, to, to the UN to come up with a plan for what to do with the British mandate. Uh, Pearson uh, chaired the first committee that created the United Nations Special Committee on Palestine. And he defined or pushed to define the United Nations Special Committee on Palestine's mandate very broadly. So he wanted to include the question of post World War II Jewish refugees with the question of Palestine. Even though Pearson, previously as ambassador, to, uh, uh, Canadian ambassador to Washington, had upheld the Mackenzie King government's anti Semitic immigration policy of refusing to allow. Uh, post World War II Jewish refugees from entering Canada. He had actually upheld uh, that and, uh, and uh, uh, pushed to not have uh, that, not allow Jewish refugees in Canada. He, he believed that the question of Jewish refugees should be tied into the question of Palestine, as if Palestinians in some way were responsible or, or uh, tied to what Hitler had done in, uh, in Europe. So he defined the United Nations Special Committee on Palestine to include that question, which of course the Zionist movement supported. He then, on the second committee, pushed the partition plan, which was heavily authored by a Canadian Supreme Court Justice, Ivan C. Rand. And that was the partition plan that gave the Zionist movement 55% of historic Palestine, even though the Jewish community was less than a third of the population, owned less than 7% of the land, and was bitterly resisted by the indigenous Palestinian population. Pearson pushed the partition plan to the point where it was dubbed the Canadian plan by the New York Times because of Pearson's negotiations between Moscow and Washington uh, about implementing uh, the partition plan. And the partition plan ultimately provides the Zionist movement with the diplomatic cover to perpetrate the Nakba, right? the destruction of Palestinian society where uh, something like 85% of Palestinians were driven from their homes in late 1947, uh, 1948. When Nasser came to power in 1952 in Egypt, uh, Pearson told Canada's ambassador, or sorry, uh, Israel's ambassador in Ottawa, that Canada would look more favorably on Israeli arms requests because Nasser was seen as unreliable. In the lead-up to the 1967 war, uh, Canada sponsored a resolution at the UN uh, calling, uh, condemning Israel, uh, Egypt's blockade of the Straits of Tehran uh, for Israeli goods. And this, was, this resolution was put forward by Canada and Denmark at the same time as the head of the UN was in Egypt negotiating the matter. At a time uh, uh, when it really contributed to the drumbeats towards war, and help provide the Israelis the, with the pretext, the diplomatic pretext for their aggression and their invasion against, uh, against their neighbors, where they would, of course, uh, 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 capture Egypt, Sinai, Syria's Golden Heights, Gaza, and the West Bank. And in response to Canada's resolution, it, it, uh, Egypt's Al Aram newspaper referred to Canada as, quote, a stooge of Western powers who seek to colonize the Arab world with Israel's help. After Israel captured uh, the Sinai, Golden Heights, Gaza, and the West Bank in a handful of days, uh, Pearson told the House of Commons that an Israeli withdrawal from these areas, quote, should be accompanied by effective international guarantees of security of Israel. So even though Israel has shown itself to be far and away the leading military power in the region, for Pearson it was always a question of Israeli security. Little question of, of Egyptian, Palestinian, Lebanese, whatever security. It's always a question of Israeli security, which is very similar to the language we hear from Stephen Harper's government today, where there's lots of concern 
for the dominant military power of security, very little concern for the security of those uh, in, in that prison we call, we call Gaza. To understand Pearson's support for Israel, uh, to understand why, what motivated his support for Israel, a 1952 memo he sent to cabinet helps explain the matter. And this was sent after the British-backed monarchy was overthrown in Egypt. He said, quote, With the whole Arab world in a state of internal unrest and in the grip of mounting anti-Western hysteria, Israel is beginning to emerge as the only stable element in the whole Middle East area. He went on to say, quote, Israel may assume an important role in Western defense as the southern pivot of current plans for the defense of the Eastern Mediterranean. Or in other words, Israel is the Western military outpost in the heart of the Middle East. Or as he put it in his biography, Pearson referred to Israel as, quote, an outpost, if you will, of the West in the Middle East. That's almost word for word the language that Jason Kenney uses when describing Harper's over-the-top support for Israel uh, as a Western outpost in the Middle East. So there's strong parallels between Pearson's uh, uh, support for Israel and, uh, and Stephen Harper's uh, support for Israel. 